Hey there, global citizens. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic that holds immense significance on the international stage, the BRICS organization. Join me as we explore the origins, goals, and impact of this influential alliance. The acronym, which was originally BRIC, was coined in 2001 by Goldman Sachs analyst Jim O'Neill, who wrote a paper on emerging economies. O'Neill said Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the countries that make up the acronym BRIC, had GDP growth that would exceed that of the G7 countries. The four original countries formed an informal group in 2006 as allies that contribute to the world economy. In 2011, South Africa joined the group, and so the acronym became BRICS. In 2023, BRICS surpassed the global GDP contribution of the G7 countries, according to the group, which says BRICS accounts for nearly one-third of the world economic activity. Leaders from BRICS countries meet annually, and this year's summit in Johannesburg, South Africa, is expected to be the biggest, with 69 leaders invited. BRICS countries aim to create new economic and trade systems, separate from the US-led Western systems, according to the group. At this year's summit, the group is discussing de-dollarization, aiming to reduce the reliance on the US dollar and promote the use of national currencies in international trade. The reason for this? The US dollar affects other currencies. When the US economy strengthens, so does the dollar, but that weakens other currencies, according to the Associated Press. Russia and China are especially eager to weaken America's standing in the world economy, and at a June meeting of BRICS countries, South Africa's Nalidi Pandor said the bloc's new development bank would look for alternatives to the current internationally traded currencies. The group first started discussing a new currency after the US imposed sanctions on Russia in the wake of that country's invasion of Ukraine. A common currency among BRICS nations could lead to the establishment of stronger economic ties and new geopolitical alliances, further solidifying their position as a rising power de-dollarization coalition, the group said. In July, Algerian President Abdel Majid Taboun said his country wanted to join the BRICS and had even set aside a kitty of $1.5 billion to contribute to the group's new development bank, in essence, to buy its ticket into the gathering. In June, Egypt also requested admission. And over the past year, Argentina, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have emerged as other candidates in a lengthening queue to potentially join the bloc, including Indonesia, the world's fourth most populous country, and Nigeria, Africa's largest economy. India feels the group needs to get its own house in order before looking at new memberships. This includes, among other things, India and China's three-year-old standoff involving thousands of soldiers stationed along their disputed border in the eastern Ladakh region. Jai Shankar, India's foreign minister, has repeatedly said that relations between the Asian giants are not normal. It is unclear whether India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping will meet on the sidelines of the summit. How the BRICS, two biggest economies, manage their relationship could determine whether the bloc thrives or sputters. Soon, it might be time to listen and accept that the BRICS simply represent a growing global sentiment. Others want a seat at the table, too.